Vibe Talks. Vibe Talks. More, More than, than just, just music. music. This is Danae Parrott, and today I'm talking with Julie Black about Digstown. Digstown is a show that showcases the African Nova Scotian experience with the historically black communities of North and East Preston. New cast members have been added this season, including Antoinette Robertson, and of course, Canada's queen of R&B and soul, Miss Julie Black, who will guest star in the first episode of the new season. Julie, how are you? I am phenomenal. I am literally phenomenal. I, I haven't felt better in my heart, in my soul, in my mind, in my body, all the things. I'm happy, I'm happy. That's so good to hear and we're like so excited to have you. We're gonna get right into it. So the first thing we wanna talk about is how is this form of expression different for you? That is the acting as an artist. How does it feel for you? You know, is it as comfortable as singing? Do you feel a different kind of pressure? I think that every performer uh, is a storyteller and can get into telling the truth, which is for me acting. So even though acting seems like you're becoming somebody else, what I quickly learned, especially becoming Nina Francis in Digstown, I have the opportunity to tell other people's stories through my vessel and really tap into emotions, tap into expressions that maybe Julie Black um, just doesn't have access to. It was a, it's an easier access point when you're like when you have empathy. So in my own life, I'm like, oh wow, we could we could see something happening on TV. It's like, man, you feel for them. But if you've actually experienced something like that, you have a different level of empathy. And so I was able to tap in in that way. It's an expression that I love. I enjoy. I I I don't enjoy the memory work. I just, I'm, oh, I'm excited to get off book. Then once yes. I'm off book, oh my gosh, it's like, just like a playground. Yes, yes. And you know, I was excited to see you in the corner. Um, and I was like blowing up your spot going, hey, you're in the corner. And then I saw this ad for Digstown season three. You are guest star. And the role is Nina Francis. It is the title of the premiere and it embodies a few critical, perhaps controversial issues like race and health discrimination. Tell me a little bit more about the character Nina. Yes, Nina Francis, married woman, um, 38. Hey, I'm gonna be 44 in four weeks, holla. Hey. Um, a family woman has children and a nurse. And so, you know, the whole notion of the woman, the matriarch still doing all the things, playing all the roles, taking care of the home. And, you know, with this whole COVID outbreak, the crisis that's happening and it's been happening all around the world, but in particular in, in Nova Scotia and North Preston, there was racialized, there, the, the, you know, black women and men were racialized and, you know, put in categories of being like hot spots and, you know, stuff right. like that. So Nina, who was a nurse, you know, I don't want to do, give the whole story away, but you know, she was blamed. She was blamed for something, and it's at the end of the day, you know, there's a lot of um, shame. Like even right now, there's there's bullying around. Are you vaccinated? Are you not vaccinated? You know, there's a whole. You know, th this the conversation is is kind of creating Clouded. segregation. You know, what I mean, it's, it's creating like separatism, and yeah. so Nina, her story is such, it's so relatable and such a bridge. Um, and uh, I think that everybody, white, black, Asian, South Asian, Latin, everybody is going to relate to this story. This production, Digstown, is promoted as the first with a black TV show runner, which is Floyd Kane, in Canada, and explores black experiences with social justice and is also keen on the African Nova Scotian experience in particular. Do you feel that significance on set? And what does it mean to you to be a part of this television production? Oh my goodness, yes and yes. I have to give shout outs to Vanessa Antoine, our lead. Our, she's care, she carries this show. She is, I believe, the first black lead in like a drama like this ever in Canada. And we're, it's in season, season three, which is a blessing, it's exciting. And so, you know, on set, um, there was a lot of local actors, even background people. There was, um, you know, local directors, you know, Corey Bowles, it was just, just my goodness, what a director. And then of course with Floyd, Floyd actually taking me in his car on a Sunday to North Preston, like we work Monday to Friday. He's like, hey, yes. do you want to see see my, my my neighborhood? Do you want to come with me? Right. You know, we went, you know, going going to um, to just all over, and it was just beautiful to yes. go to North Preston and 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 the quiet, 
and, and just seeing and just hearing the stillness and the country that's okay. what north preston felt like it felt like country you know okay, and, okay. Like, we have this in canada like this is yeah, yeah. it was unbelievable and it really helped to inform who nina is and how i was able to really tell her story yeah and, and it's a significant um place in Nova Scotia, right? And so um, it's really cool, I think, that Floyd is from there um, to inform the storytelling as well, right? Your character is key to two conversations I would identify, racial bias in Canada and the legal system and, and additionally, how we're handling COVID. Are there for you any poignant moments where, you know, you want the viewer not to miss out, just you just pay special attention to this. Are there any key points for you? Mm, I would say make sure you take your, your your bathroom break early and do not leave the TV screen, especially right. when it comes to that court scene. Uh, the court scene okay. was, was really poignant. It really had me realize my privilege. I'm sitting in privilege. And beyond mm -hmm. the privilege of becoming and being Julie Black, it's like these stories, these cases are happening every day all right. around the world and happening here in, in our own country. I think sometimes Canadians, you know, we can be passive and be like, oh, okay, I, you know, that's happening over there. Um, so definitely, you know, pay attention, pay attention to how how Vanessa, how Mar Marcy, you know, I keep calling her by her <laughs> birth name. Marcy, Marcy Diggs, Marcy Diggs went, I, Marcy Diggs for me, she's my Olivia Pope. And I, right. I just love Vanessa. I have to say this on here right now. That's, you know, Unlike other uh, productions I've been a part of, uh, Vanessa took her time to reach out to me, ask do I want to get on Zoom to run lines. We got to know each other. We spent as much time as we could because we were in the same bubble in Nova Scotia. And I've never had that. And I've right. never, ever had that. Typically, you know, sometimes there's a competitive energy or whatever. She was like, yeah, listen, yeah. we both need to fly. We That's both right. need to fly. And we were locked and loaded for life. That's my girl, you know. We just had Mexican right. two days ago, you know. <laughs> listen, listen, and it's so important to see her dig. That's the dig and dig sound. I, 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 I can, I confess because she delivers in that court scene. And you're right, audiences should, you know, you gotta sit around and wait for that part. You can't move because you will not want to move. There's some, there's some outbursts. There's some emotion from Julie, and that's all I'll say. That's all. <laughs> that's all I say. And this has been a challenging 18 months, Julie, for artists and actors and the entertainment sector overall. How have you personally coped with the challenges and how does it feel to be on a production during a pandemic? Let me tell you something. Um, this is where sometimes I find myself, I hesitate before I say this. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna, I, I took a pause again. This has been the most fruitful, prosperous 18 months of my adult life and wow. i say this because i've never have i ever had time to sit and be still and mm -hmm. see what it feels like to be alone versus lonely um i've been able to do work with um well now they're called bgc uh formerly boys and girls club of Canada and you know I was a part of Boys and Girls Club so over this last year doing like coming off of Caroline which you came to that was our the last live thing yes right? yes like yes. literally the last live thing that happened. literally and yeah. everything went blank everything went blank and to see okay so now you know um, my mom used to say this too like you know when you have when you have when you're waiting then serve how could you serve I was right. with you Danae driving around dropping food off literally you know, Literally serving. Literally. And that, I'm going to thank you, Ron, here again. I thank you all the time, but I'm in front of everybody, that you inviting me into that space. Don't you like, you look at it like, oh, you're doing this for us. I looked at it like, you gave me purpose, sis. You gave me a purpose for those three, four months. Like, I look forward to my Sundays. I love that. And, you know, you hinted at this, and I don't, I don't want us to miss the opportunity for you to talk about this. Your work with BGC. Um, you know, it's in line with what Digstown is about, right? Like making sure that we are keeping it real on all levels. And so now you've, you've taken this on right. and they've rebranded. Tell us a little bit more, uh, more about what your involvement is with, with RG, with RGC. I, I was a part of their, I was a, as a child, I was 10 years old. That 
actually that was a program that my mom put me in as a kid and uh with dwight drummond okay he was my my boys and girls club camp leader um but over the past little while it started off with doing a program and an, an initiative called unplug to connect and we realized that so many kids and adults too but are connected to their devices so it's like what would it look like if we actually unplugged even for a, a day even for two hours to connect in person and so i started off doing work with them in that way and some other initiatives and um i just i just kept in touch I've, I've hosted their their national youth um, youth day. There's like six amazing youth that was like awarded for their community service, etc. And and as they rebrand, because we're in a day a, an era of you know gender and non-binary and all those things, it's like okay, so you know it's it's an acronym like like RBC, like KFC. We know KFC is Kentucky Fried Chicken, but everybody says KFC. And so right now. Um, we're, we're working together once again. And um, I just want to make sure that I, I want to be on right. the radar. Put it on the radar. Exactly. Exactly. So knowing that in this pandemic, um, they were still able to serve. We were still able to serve over 200,000 kids, you know, recognizing, meet them where they are. If it's technology, then let's use technology to actually meet them where they are. Right. I think sometimes um, many look at it like, well, if we don't go into the brick and mortar to sit down and play ball or be on the computer, it's like, hey, you know, and that's what's been happening over this last year and a half. And it's, it's caused us to have even tighter connections because now I'm able to keep in touch with these youth on, on social media and watch them thrive and watch them soar. Yeah. It's so good that we had a chance to sit and chat with you just for a little bit. Diggs Town goes live season three tell everybody when they can tune in and see your episode and if you caught my episode this week you'll want to catch it on cbc gem you can catch the replay on cbc yeah. gem of course and but every wednesday support this this form of artistry you know indigenous actors black actors white actors asian actors this is the thing about Digstown all covered, but written and created by a black man, Floyd Kane from Nova Scotia, every Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern on CBC. And you you will wanna binge watch season one and two and yes. catch up with season three. Okay, and we hope to catch up with you again, Julie. It's so great always seeing you and we wish you all the best. You know, we keep rooting for you and cheering from the sidelines. So all the best to you. you. You take care, much love. You too. So that was our conversation with Miss Julie Black, of course, Canada's queen of R&B and soul. And she's also going to be a part of this season of Diggs Town. So you want to make sure you check that out. For more music, news, and reviews, visit us at Vibe105TO and follow us on our socials at Vibe105TO. This is Danae signing off. And now back to your Vibe, Vibe105.